Hello and welcome to today's episode of Chatting With. Today I'm joined with Manuel, who is a professor in computer vision. Hi. Uh, so I think we'll just start by letting you introduce yourself, kind of who you are, what you're about, and how your career has brought you to Dundee. Okay. So, um, hello everybody. Um, um, so I'm Manuel Trucco, um, 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 and uh, I... Um, joined uh, the then School uh, of Computing in 2007 um, uh, on a professorship uh, called uh, the Northern Research Partnership Professorship of Computational Vision, which is a, a, a terrible mouthful. However, I do do computer vision um, um, for my research um, uh, in the Computer Vision and Image Processing Group uh, that uh, Stephen McKenna and myself uh, um, co-lead um, uh, and uh, what we do there is uh, largely near uniquely at this point, nearly uh, only uh, medical image uh, analysis, uh, uh, of which I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit uh, later. Um, how I got to Dundee, um, lucky me, um, I, I came to this country, I'm obviously not British, uh, I came to this country a long time ago, 1988, for my PhD at the University of Edinburgh. Um, the second part of my PhD, to be precise. And uh, then uh, uh, I started on uh, contract work uh, at the University of Edinburgh, and then at Heriot Watt, and then I became a lecturer at Heriot Watt. And fast forward, uh, when I was a reader at Heriot Watt, uh, I started looking around for chair positions, uh, and uh, um, um, I could have gone to Bath, uh, but Dundee was so much better, so I came to Dundee, um, uh, and lucky me indeed, because it was uh, the School of Computing was a fantastic place where, where to work uh, um, and develop what I was interested in doing. Um, um, so that's about uh, more or less my story. Do you think it's, Rachel, it's a sufficient explanation? Yes, I didn't know you came in 2007, because that's also the year I came to Dundee. Oh, right. I didn't know you came to Dundee in 2007. There you are. It was a good year. Yeah, I came to Dundee as an MSc student in 2007. Okay. Oh, yes, of course, we are entirely homemade. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Um, uh, proud product yeah, of the School of Computing. <laughs> 2007 for my MSc and kind of stuck around. So there you go. Um, Lucky us. So, yeah. So what was your motivation to follow a kind of research career path then to go down the route of doing a PhD and stay in the research field? In my case, uh, it was, uh, <laughs> I suppose, largely a matter of personal character. Um, um, I, so when I was at university, again, in, in the Paleozoic age, uh, um, uh, many, many years ago in Italy, um, um, I was very curious uh, on, in general. Um, uh, and so when I chose my final year project, uh, um, which incidentally lasted a whole year um, in those days, uh, was um, I was attracted by research projects. They were the usual, like we do in, 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 uh, um, uh, in computing, there was a selection between uh, projects which are projects, um, yeah. uh, variously interesting, yeah. and projects. Yeah. Correct, attached to research programs. So I chose one of those. Uh, I got super enthusiastic. Uh, and that was, uh, again, some sort of computer vision as it was done uh, in, in the 80s. Um, um, so very, very simple computer vision, can we say, compared to now. No neural networks. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, and then it stuck. Essentially, I got more and more interested. And you know, when you're young, you got also more energy and your interest is really a passion. And it was like that. Uh, so I ended up working, when I got my degree, um, uh, I ended up working for a couple of years for a research center of the European communities in northern Italy, a place called ISPRA. It's one of the four research community research centers in Europe, um, do more computer vision. And then I decided to go into university um, uh, and started a PhD. And, and then that brought me here. Um, um, it is really a... In my case, uh, it was uh, largely a question of, you know, being curious and research was, was the thing to do. Uh, I have to say, in those days, uh, um, the situation, the opportunities uh, for somebody with a degree in, say, in computer science uh, for doing research uh, uh, were very different from now, in the sense that there wasn't Google, there wasn't Facebook, 
there wasn't any of the, um, and there weren't certainly spin-offs uh, uh, like there are today, abundant uh, spin-offs uh, in need of young talents uh, um, in the field of artificial intelligence. Uh, it, it was a much more um, uh, limited situation, I would say. So for me, wanted to do research and staying in university were pretty much the same thing. Now the situation is very different and our students had enormous opportunities uh, and choices uh, um, uh, because now the choice between uh, um, doing research in a university environment and doing research uh, in a company environment, uh, you know, this is a real practical choice these days. Um, um, and I would say, um, I would say that probably a good tactics uh, <laughs> would be to um, uh, start with university research, uh, meaning you do a final year project, for instance, attached to a research program, um, uh, then you do a master, a PhD, um, uh, and, and then you're ready to, to sell yourself well to a company. It, it's not necessary, of course, you can go into a company straight away, but normally if you go with a PhD, my observation is uh, that you attract much higher salaries, uh, uh, you do more interesting things. So what, what do you think are the main differences then between doing a research position in academia and a research position in industry? Companies. Uh, um, uh, I can tell you some, uh, my perception of some general differences, but then of course it depends uh, um, in, in which university, in which group you end up uh, and in which company, and in which group you end up. Um, uh, so again, if I think at the past, uh, the situation is very different uh, in the sense, sorry, this is not the direct answer to your question, but as a little word of context, uh, um, if you look at the situation 15, 20 years ago, which is probably not interesting for our students apart from curiosity, um, um, the main difference was that uh, uh, you could do real research by far and large in universities uh, and it was very hard to do real research in the same way, you know, thinking up new things, uh, new software, new algorithms and so on in companies. Uh, now, and, and trying to answer your question, what is the difference between uh, res now research in university and research in companies? Uh, um, uh, it really depends a lot on where you end up. But suppose for the sake of the argument uh, that you are comparing a good quality um, uh, research group uh, like ours in, in computing, plural ours, in, um, and uh, anything like uh, um, a good spin-off, uh, say, for instance, in artificial intelligence uh, with good investment levels uh, or even a big giant like uh, uh, Facebook or Google or, or the like. So I would say the main difference is, uh, I will mention two. Um, um, one is resources um, mm -hmm. uh, and the other is freedom. Um, um, resources is, is, I have to say, is if you if you get employed by one if you're good enough because this must be stressed if you're good enough yes. see what i was saying about phd first um, uh, if you've proven yourself and you made yourself interest because of your skills uh, to one of the of the big companies uh, then uh, you find yourself in an environment uh, where the amount of resources uh, you have at your disposal in terms of machines, uh, in terms of salary, yeah, does not compare. Let me be completely honest. It does not compare, okay? On the other hand, uh, um, uh, not everybody goes there because the big companies are very selective, of course. Uh, and so this is where I think it's interesting to compare also with a kind of spin-off, one of the zillions uh, of uh, spin-off companies uh, with some levels of investment, uh, which do you know, any flavor of artificial intelligence for medical, for non-medical, for security, for whatever it is. And there, there are, again, from my observation of people I talk to, you know, students who ended up in similar situations, these kind of companies, there may be constraints uh, compared to a university environment. A, a university environment, meaning a PhD, um, uh, it's a place where you have a considerable amount of research and you are expected to bring your own ideas to the table and after the first year certainly 
roughly speaking, to you know, to be your own man or woman <laughs> or or others, um, uh, and 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 build uh, your own research project and bring your own ideas and so on. This is this may be the case, uh, but it's not always the case uh, in uh, in companies. We're talking small companies, of course, uh, as as far as I can tell. Again, if you end up with one of the big ones, uh, they they seem to be um, uh, you know very lucky um, from this point of view. Uh, but you must be very clever, clearly. Yeah. So I've got a few friends who've gone to industry, and one works for a very big company, and he has a lot of. He has a lot of freedom in a sense, but it's within this bubble. You know, he's, he's got to always stay within the company bubble. Um, but the lifestyle is very different. The lifestyle is um, very looked after and um, kind of the resources that were kind of thrown in his direction um, after the whole kind of country lockdown was just incredible. <laughs> what showed up at his door for him to work with? I was like, oh, okay. I took my office chair home. <laughs> you know. yeah. uh, so that's a big difference. Um, and another friend who worked, loved it so much, the kind of industry, agile environment that goes along with that and is now in a startup company. Um, so, you know, that's just one step further from being in the, the research environment. Okay. So. I, I have to say that, uh, again, for our students, it may be, you mentioned this before, sorry, um, it may be interesting to hear of roots um, if anybody is interested in how to get into research. Uh, um, uh, and again, I, 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 the model I have in mind uh, is, uh, is the standard path uh, of uh, I get a computer science first degree, I do a master and or a PhD, and, and then I look around essentially, maybe a postdoc and so on. So, it, an excellent starting point uh, is uh, a, a project with one of the research groups um, uh, because uh, it means you are embedded in, in a research group, uh, meaning you, you, you begin to see how it works, uh, um, uh, what people do, how people speak. Uh, you know, you typically begin to be, you, you would be co-supervised uh, by um, um, some senior figure like myself, who is generally useless. Um, and somebody uh, who is uh, much younger, like one of our PhD students, uh, second, third year, one postdoc, uh, is much more useful because he knows what the software is doing, you know, can give you practical advice. I'm joking a little bit, but um, uh, the point is uh, um, uh, you get embedded uh, in a whole research group, and that's an ex to me, it, it remains an excellent experience to begin with. Uh, also because it gives you an opportunity to, to, to think uh, always remembering it's one example, maybe this is not the thing for me, you know, maybe I want to do something else, maybe I want to try a company first. Um, but if you're happy with the experience, uh, um, um, then uh, the next thing to do, obviously, um, uh, would be to do a further degree. Um, um, but it is very rare uh, that, as far as I can see, that people really interested in staying in research uh, get a, a kind of pre-doc um, research assistant positions also because these are very rare um, uh, comparatively research groups uh, with research funds typically want to employ uh, people with a phd so the obvious next move uh, would be to do a phd and there you have choices once again because uh, you know it may be the case that you're very happy with the experience you had uh, in your uh, final year project and you want to stay in the same group uh, um, uh, it may be that the group uh, can take you on because uh, there must be some resources, of course, and somebody must pay for the PhD. It may be that you want to move out uh, and, uh, to explore something new. Um, it may be that you want to stay, but there are not resources. So there are various scenarios. Um, um, a PhD is, I would say, apart from the money that may be, of course, competitive and maybe difficult to achieve, uh, um, um, I would say that people can be spoiled for choice. Um, I believe uh, certainly in, in the field I see that there is the demand exceeds the offer. Um, uh, and I'm saying this, uh, it must be clear that I'm saying this uh, um, uh, thinking of quality of the offer. 
because a lot of people would like to do a PhD, but you know, uh, we take on people with a minimum uh, demonst demonstrable skills, uh, um, uh, and uh, you know, we must be persuaded that they they can deliver. Um, uh, yeah. So, um, but of course, if you're interested as a student uh, to get into that route, uh, and uh, you know, you, you're not sort of uh, stubbornly fixated with one place, uh, pretty much the world is your oyster. Of course, uh, there's COVID, uh, which reduces the size of the oyster and, and the number of pearls inside the oyster. But again, you know, this will, this will change hopefully for the better. Yeah, and I, I think actually the few people I do know that have gone into research without having the opportunity to do a PhD, I think the PhD is such a developmental thing. I agree. That it's such, because it, it, that's your opportunity to fail really, isn't it? That's your opportunity to go, oh, this didn't work, I need a new tactic and build that resilience and skill set to overcome whatever the research problem is. That I think it's, it's more than being a student. Absolutely. Right? It's Absolutely. You're entirely right. You, yeah, you're so, entirely right, really, much more than being a student. <laughs> so you've got a student who's kind of keen on the research track but they, they don't really go upstairs very much so all of our students stay on the ground floor and then research happens above um okay how, what, what would you say to encourage them how would they get started how do they approach people and find out what's going on so that they can become a part of it I think there are various routes. Uh, I, I was trying to understand this thing. They don't go upstairs very much. It took me two seconds. Um, <laughs> okay, um, there are various routes, uh, of course. Uh, um, um, one is the um, one uh, jokes apart uh, is uh, uh, the fact that all the people doing research, all the staff um, uh, doing research, teach in. Uh, Several of the teachers, well, I'm tempted to say everybody who does research certainly teaches Frontier. Um, um, you know, the, yeah. the modules from Research Frontiers are all drawn from research, uh, uh, essentially, um, but not on research here. So um, uh, asking people, asking lecturers, is the next, I would say, and choosing carefully your project is another excellent start um, uh, because that is the moment when you begin to talk to people which matters you know um, uh, it's your occasion when you choose your project you go around and talk to the various people who offer projects yep. uh, or because you want to do your own project you go around and ask whether somebody is prepared anybody is prepared to supervise you that is a great opportunity um, um, <laughs> I would say it, we, we are always, uh, we always welcome questions. Uh, uh, I'm speaking not just for myself, I hope I speak for everybody. We always welcome questions from students. I understand that if you are a CS4 student uh, or, or a CS3 student, uh, uh, it, it's probably it's not, the, I imagine it's not the most natural thing to do to, to appear in a laboratory and say, I would like some information. Uh, again, um, um, you know, dropping an email to, lecturers that you know are involved uh, in, in research work uh, um, and this is easy information to it, it is very welcome um, and this is easy information to source uh, um, because so who is doing what uh, through the university website yep. our website uh, the research groups website uh, um, uh, again uh, asking if I, I one thing which I hope is obvious to students uh, and it seems to be obvious to students that uh, um, we, meaning computing, uh, are, are a very open community um, uh, towards students. Uh, you know, I, we, I, I hope we, you know, I don't think we create barriers of any sort. So, all, all, any questions is welcome. Yeah, see, I would say actually, even before you're thinking of doing your project, you want to start exposing yourself to that. And for me, the place to expose yourself to that is our degree show. So, at the end of the year, all the fourth years are doing their project. I think if you come along to that as a first year, a second year, a third year, especially the earlier years, I think it really exposes you to all the directions that 
this could go. You know, I'm learning Java, great, but what's the real world implications of learning Java? Oh, well, I could do computer vision, I could do HCI, I can do all these things that actually, yeah. This is an excellent it's idea. To have go to these demo <laughs> sessions more often. <laughs> I, I feel sort of embarrassed and not thinking of this myself, but excellent, excellent point. And, um, um, and in actual fact, uh, there are several shows uh, that we run and hope will resume running. You know, there, there's the final year, there's the masters, there's the data science masters, which I believe uh, do something separate. Yeah. So this, this is an excellent thought. Yeah. This is an excellent thought. They're all open and uh, um, uh, yeah, and you can talk not only to academic stuff, but with the actual students uh, uh, who are probably more senior. Yeah, on the ground experience. <laughs> exactly. And uh, people whose experience is very much fresh and from the receiving end, um, yeah. uh, instead of talking to me and you, you know. So it's complementary information. Excellent tool, definitely. No, definitely. Like, so, yeah, so I think, I think the message is to just, just ask questions, right? Just show up we all we all like questions there is nothing a researcher loves more than talking about what they do right totally once you true. know that bit of information you've got a captive audience haven't you totally As a true. Yeah. Um, uh, and and actually <laughs> you should be you should be aware when you start asking questions you'll find somebody who doesn't stop talking probably because gets very very enthusiastic um, um yeah, and, and this business of asking questions uh, to me is, uh, is uh, uh, intimately related to where I started from, uh, you know, saying to, to me, research uh, is, uh, is really a passion um, uh, and it's got to be, you know, because it's, it's a job where, I mean, you go into research because you're curious, you want to find answers, to, 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 you want to build something new um, um, and that is, I keep thinking, you know, that is the beauty of it. That there are, then you learn there are many dimensions. Uh, um, uh, you know, the world is a complex thing, but the basic thing, in my, not only mind, in my, you know, feeling, um, why you want to do research is because you are curious, and if you are curious, asking questions uh, is is the normal state of affairs. So I would encourage people to come to not just to me, you know, just go around and ask questions. You you you'll never be considered a nuisance. Well, no, from some cases. <laughs> and there are no silly questions, right? Because everybody started knowing nothing about the topic. Everybody started asking that first, what's going on here question. Everyone started that, I have no idea, but I'd like to know type approach. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> there are no silly questions. Uh, in the, and again, uh, um, uh, you know, part of, uh, sorry, I do not want to, um, um, specify too much of a profile of a good researcher, but um, uh, it is an advantage uh, if you are, if you have initiative. Notice, I'm not saying if you show initiative, if you have initiative, you know, if you have this inner motivation of going around and do things, asking questions, uh, there are, the, the, don't wait for things to, to come to you. Um, uh, that's another good trait uh, um, uh, for a researcher. Definitely. Okay, so I've been rounding these off, asking the same question to everyone. And the question that I'm asking to everyone is, what is the one piece of advice that you would give to a student who's studying computer? Uh, the line actually fluctuated at the crucial moment. A, a piece of advice what? I would give to a student who does what? Sorry. Who studies computing. Who studies so computing. Computer. Ha, ah, good question. The one piece of advice, uh, um, uh, well, uh, I would say on the back of what we've just been discussing and generalizing a little bit uh, is uh, um, uh, be honest with yourself. Um, um, you know, don't try to be something that you're not uh, at the moment. You, you'll become things that you cannot even imagine probably. But at the moment you are something. Look inside yourself. You know, first of all, are you doing the right thing? Um, uh, I hope you are. Uh, be ruthlessly honest uh, in uh, in these questions, uh, and and then uh, um, uh, thinking of your next stage. Uh, I'm thinking of CS4, but you know, um, um, 
what is it really that you want to do? And, and, and be totally honest about this because, uh, okay, when you're, I'm sorry to sound uh, old and boring, but when you're young, you've got a lot of times in front of you, it is true, and you've got to use it well. You know, you, yes, okay, so, okay, I can make one mistake or two because I have time, but um, um, in my personal experience and, and observation, some bad mistakes that we can make life uh, and work is important aspect of life, you know, studying, working, um, uh, it's so much time of our life. We try to cheat ourselves, you know, in, we go in to do things we don't want to do, like uh, sometimes we have to make compromise, of course, but it, it helps to try to understand what they would answer. Yeah, awesome. So I think we'll finish up there, but thank you very much. Thank you. Um, My piece of advice is to be honest with yourself, which I think is very insightful. Uh, thank you very so, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, goodbye, everybody.